Okay, uh, to call the order of meeting of the Whaley Select Board on uh, February 10th, 2021. First agenda item is the meeting minutes of, of uh, approving the meeting minutes of January 27th, 2021. Motion to accept. I don't hear Joy. Joyce is muted. No, I, Fred, I just made a motion to accept. Oh, okay. to, uh, I'll to second that motion. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. Sorry. Okay, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yep. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Fred? Yes. Okay, next item is the vendor and payroll warrants that were in our packet of information. Any comments, questions? Oh, I'll look okay. Okay, moving on, uh, public comments. Uh, don't think we have anybody unless listening, uh, comments not related to items on the agenda. Okay, moving to our scheduled appointments. Yes, we're about on, on time. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, our representatives here with us today, uh, Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Natalie Blaze, uh, having a discussion on local priorities, uh, legislative issues, and what they can help us do in, the, in our town. So uh, I guess I'll turn it over to, I, I guess, uh, Joe first, Comerford. Um, thank you so much, Fred, um, and thank you so much to everyone uh, for giving us the opportunity. Um, I'll, I think we, we each want to speak only very, very briefly, uh, okay. because we certainly want to hear from you. That's our main goal, and I want to really thank Rep. Lay, especially for initiating this, and you all for your service. Um, I can't imagine a harder job during the COVID pandemic and economic crisis than municipal work. There is just nothing harder um, than I can imagine. Um, and so again, I just wanna recognize the Herculean lift that you've been doing. Um, I'll just say that before COVID I would have, and if this were before COVID, I think the world's gonna now be divided into before COVID and after COVID. Um, before COVID, if I were coming to you, I would have said, you know, I think about my job like this, money for the district, money for statewide priorities, policies that benefit the district, policies for state that are statewide priorities and important to Western Mass, um, municipal work and, you know, in support of municipalities and constituent service. And I would have thought about dividing my day a lot like that. Um, and I'm certainly happy to talk about some of those things, but I, I would say that since last February, so a year ago, really almost everything, every, every day, every work day, um, which is many of the days of the week, um, have been devoted to COVID, um, to the COVID response. So I, I had the privilege of being asked by the Senate president to chair the Senate's COVID response. Um, and that was a big part of my focus. And so I was focusing statewide on things like testing and contact tracing, personal protective equipment, um, research on the vaccine. Now, of course, on the distribution of the vaccine, but always in partnership with Natalie, you know, having an eye toward Western Massachusetts and what our municipalities, our hospitals, our community health centers, our public health officials needed. Um, and so that's been a very, it's been a huge focus for the last year. Um, so, you know, this is now only my second term as you all know. And I, I, again, it, it's going to be very, very much taken up with COVID and the COVID response and making sure that especially those who are the most vulnerable among us, um, make it through. And as I know you know, COVID exposed the grossest possible health inequities that were there long before the pandemic hit. Um, and we see them embodied, embodied here a lot by high levels of high rates of rural poverty, uh, transportation and access, school funding challenges, you know, everything that got exacerbated. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, we also see it embodied by a local public health um, sector uh, infrastructure that is just you know, led by these unbelievably tireless people who are, you know, climbing insurmountable hills uh, because the state has disinvested in public health infrastructure in the Commonwealth. And so one of the bills 
that I'm introducing is a bill to rebuild, to transform, to totally remake uh, local public health. Uh, and I think of communities like Waitley, frankly, when I do that, um, because you have an unbelievable public health cohort, um, but the state has not done right by you. Not at all, not for years. Um, and COVID just showed us how bad the situation was. Um, so in addition to that, of course, I'll lock arms with Natalie on everything I possibly can, uh, from education to transportation um, and beyond. Uh, but I'll stop there. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, Natalie. Thanks, Joe. It's great to be here with you tonight. Joe and I spend a lot of time together virtually. <laughs> uh, so it's nice to have other people in the room and it's nice to see your faces. Uh, I wanna thank you for giving us the opportunity to spend some time with you tonight and hear how we can support you in the 192nd session. Um, you know, we, we had a really busy 191st session, which was our first term for both of us learned how to do business one way in the first year and then had to learn how to do business a completely different way when COVID-19 hit. Uh, and I know, I, 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 speak, I think I speak for Joe here as well, that you know, having a high level of constituent services, not only for individuals, but also for our municipalities has, has been top of mind for us. Um, so I wanna just thank you for having us here tonight. One of the things that I'll be looking to try to shine a light on in the 192nd session, which I really did focus on a lot in the 191st as a member of the Transportation Committee, is the unique challenges facing our rural communities when it comes to public transportation. Uh, I think we saw Charlie Baker put out his, his recommendations for the Chapter 90 funding amounts. It's level funded at 200. And we need to make sure you know, if we're able to get it up to the 300 that we had hoped for last session before COVID hit, it would really be remarkable for our small towns. I'm also looking at introducing a piece of legislation that would begin to delve into the challenges that our rural communities are facing when it comes to maintaining dirt roads. Uh, as you know, there are, we have miles and miles of dirt roads that municipalities have to maintain. And I think we've seen with climate change that the freeze thaw cycle is not as long as it used to be. And so the amount of, of materials that you're having to put onto these dirt roads to maintain them, to make sure that they're open is really becoming more and more challenging for our municipalities. So that's legislation that I'll be introducing and I'm grateful uh, to Senator Cumberford for her partnership on that. Um, the other thing that I pursued last session and we'll be introducing again this session is, is providing relief to municipalities for the TNC reporting requirements. So there is, when, uh, when you take an Uber or a Lyft ride, I'm sure you know this, uh, there's some money that's set aside, it goes back into our communities and, and what we see in our rural towns is that some of our communities are getting 10 cents and if you want to uh, be able to use that money, you have to appropriate it, even if it's 10 cents, which seems a little ridiculous. Uh, and then the other thing that we'll be doing is looking, so taking away that appropriation piece, but also taking away that annual reporting piece, which just takes up time that I know Brian would much rather be spending on Haydenville Road, for example. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I do want to, to thank Brian and, and a number of you for working with us to get uh, Administrator Gulliver's attention uh, on Haydenville Road Mountain Street project. And we're really working closely together, not only as a delegation, but as your know, planning commissions and MassDOT district offices to really advance those two projects, hopefully at the same time, uh, to make sure that we're, we're not letting that, those two projects fall behind. Uh, so I'm just, I'll leave it there and certainly want to hear from you about what your priorities are and how we can be most helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll make a few comments here and then we'll go around to the other two and three of us here that are on. Uh, I guess looking in, uh, in the papers, I, I see that uh, 
Se Senator Hines is, is trying to, to restore the, the taxes for uh, state-owned properties and looking at pilot uh, programs to, to restore them at, at either full, full or higher levels of, of funding. Uh, yeah, I, I support that. I encourage you to support that because it's, 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 it's not a critical issue for us today because our we have a growth rate that keep maintaining that tax rate on the, on the state properties, but that growth is not going to continue. Uh, so at some point in the future, we're going to be losing state revenue on that. Uh, on state properties and also the, the pilot efforts on, on solar farms as well. So, uh, that was one thing. Uh, and also appreciate your efforts with, with uh, helping the, the two towns in North and city of Northampton, I would say, on the Haydenville Road project. I think the coordination effort is starting to come together and we're talking and hopefully we're on the right track to get something done. Uh, the other thing I've, I've noticed uh, is on uh, uh, related to marijuana establishments. We, we've, the town here has probably signed off on, and Brian can correct me, three or four host community agreements over the last probably two years. And we haven't seen any of them uh, uh, businesses that we, we signed off on that agreement get state approval to do anything in town. And yet, I guess I see Northampton having many sites, three, four, five. East Hampton is getting four or five already. Uh, I don't know about Greenfield, uh, but where are the rural communities? Where are the, the rural agencies? Uh, where's their share of that? How, how is that being decided on? And, and you know, we're sitting here waiting. We're, we're working with, with the companies that come to town they find respectable and, and uh, properties to develop and, and sell and, 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 and grow the crops, but yet we don't get state approval. They don't get state approval. Why? Why is it taking so long for even to get one approved in, in our town? And, and I think I could say the same for the, the rural communities here, not the cities, but the, the rural towns. That are that are having the same problem. I, I don't see them getting approval for for marijuana establishments either. So, okay, that's my couple items now. Uh, okay, I'll turn it over to uh, okay Joyce. Hi, um, I have a whole big list here, but since I'm the liaison for the schools and the police on the select board, maybe I'll start with those. Um, uh, we asked our uh, school's uh, superintendent's office and so on for some input. And there were kind of two things that came out of that conversation um, that, um, well, they really fall into one category. And we've got a number of programs where we are kind of required to do something for people who have needs, either special needs or in this case, food needs. Um, and those programs were heavily subsidized by people paying in who were not in the needs category. So specifically school lunches, uh, the food program, um, when we don't have the paying students helping subsidize um, for the students who are getting say federal aid or whichever state or federal aid, I don't distinguish between those. Um, we were finding we, those are running in a deficit now and we're gonna have to cut something else in order to fund those. The other one is the preschool. Um, we're obliged to provide preschool for students with special needs. And that was balanced with students who pay into school um, and people paying to come to preschool anymore. Um, that's another place where we just, the, the school is having trouble coming up and that's district wide. So it's not just surprised if you're hearing that in other small towns uh, in your districts as well. So that's what the, the schools had asked us to bring up. Um, it says my internet connection is unstable, so I hope my voice is stable here. Um, the other area that I'm the liaison for is the police, and they uh, there's a you are both aware of this uh, police um, reform bill. I, got, I guess the acronym is POST. Um, and I'm not against police reform at all, but it does look like the extra training requirements 
um, may be very onerous for small towns where you need to, where, where, I mean, we have a couple of full-time and then a lot of part-time officers. Um, and it's not clear how to get the training to the part-time officers. Um, so I, I, I think we might need some support on figuring out what we really have to do to comply. Um, when you just read through it, it seems like it's pretty onerous. And we out having it just, you know, it's only just come out. <clears throat> so it might be that we're not reading it right. Um, but it, it could really amount to an unfunded mandate on small towns for with our small police forces. Um, and, you know, I know this doesn't happen in any other area, but, you know, something that works really well for Boston not working out here. I know. When does that happen? Um, but this might, this might be one of those cases. Um, and we're, I mean, we're looking into it. We don't know if it's as grim as it, as it looks initially. Um, but that's a place where um, I'm a little worried about the upcoming budget year and how we're going to comply with that uh, by July 1st, which is my understanding is that's when we've got to be in compliance. Um, so that's just, a, that's a little worry on my mind. Um, there's other things, but John's on the energy committee, so I'll let him make comments related to those sorts of things. Um, did I get did I capture the school's worries, Brian, uh, appropriately? You think? Yeah, I, I think so. You broke up a little bit, but I mean, really to summarize it, there were revenue streams that that supported those two programs, the the lunch program and the the preschool program, and because of COVID, those revenue streams have dried up. Um, so. And those are not really programs that we can cut. So we're looking for other sources of revenue, which for the upcoming uh, fiscal year are likely going to be town funds. Um, Waitley in the in the in our district, I think Waitley is going to be least impacted, but um, some of the I think Deerfield and Sunderland are going to be more impacted. But we're we're still impacted somewhat. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind that some budget some school budgets are going to get hit really hard in those two areas. Okay, uh, Jonathan, do you have some comments you want to make? Yeah, um, I, I will try to keep them very brief, but I want to first echo what Joyce said. Um, she's understating the challenges that police reform will bring to our either A, our budgets, or B, our delivery of service. Take your pick, but it's going to be one of them. Um, and I will admit that I don't hold out a lot of hope that anything will happen, um, but we will either have to find money to pay the training requirements of at least six part-time officers um, to the tune of what I believe is close to $20,000 a person for that training. Um, and that's just not something that's affordable. That's our police budget. Um, so we will either have to eliminate part-time officers um, or find dramatic cuts somewhere else to pay for the training uh, to, to, in order to, to preserve our, our service delivery at the current levels. Um, and I'm, I'm well aware that conversations, you know, they, they took place when the legislation was being crafted about the impact on part-time police officers and the legislation still reads as it does. Um, I've been working pretty closely lately with uh, other people from Deerfield, Sunderland, and other towns. Um, we are trying to put together a select board association meeting for the four counties on this very topic. Um, but frankly, we're getting to, 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 so I can explain my frustration and my lack of belief that anything will happen. Um, it's hard to find advocates who will spend time presenting the issue because they don't believe anything's gonna happen anyway. So it's, it, it's not a, a good use of time. Um, police reform was critical, uh, but once again, just like most pieces of legislation, it's written from the perspective of large communities as opposed to small rural communities. Um, and it's really going to hurt. It's either going to hurt from service delivery or, or from a budget. Um, I'll, I'll get off my, my, my soapbox there. Um, from an energy perspective, I, I think we're looking for 
a partner to really craft procedures to make electric vehicle charging stations more viable in rural communities, passing um, or, 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 or finding market research, market data that demonstrates need in a rural community is a lot tougher than finding that, that market research that demonstrates need in more urban communities. Uh, we just don't have the traffic. Um, but I, I guarantee you that the need for electric vehicle charging stations in a town like Whateley and other towns is absolutely critical. And, and as I read the different grant opportunities, et cetera, it's again, sort of couched towards the larger communities. If I'm wrong about that, I apologize, but it, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing. I've been working with the Department of Transportation now for well over a year to just get two level two charging stations put into the park and ride that's uh, essentially the intersection of 116 and 510. And it takes forever because again, It'll happen, but there's no sense of urgency again because we're a small rural area with, with relatively speaking little traffic. Um, but EV charging stations are a big deal if we want to see electric vehicles um, brought to scale in terms, of, in terms of their use in the area. Um, I, I guess that from an energy perspective is, is, our, is our driver. Um, I, I think we're gonna have to have a long conversation about battery storage for solar at some point as well uh, in the not too distant future. Um, as we all know, battery storage is, is the future for solar. And if we don't have strong legislation that, that tackles that issue, um, you're gonna see solar demand diminish dramatically. Um, so I, I would just sort of put that on the radar that I know that the, the three people on the Energy Committee in Waitley are eager to work with whomever wants to do this um, because battery storage, without battery storage, the solar industry is, gonna, is, gonna, is going to suffer, to put it mildly. Um, and then I guess the last thing I wanna talk about, and I always talk about it, is, is economic development. Um, there doesn't seem to be an appetite um, to help people, to help small rural communities with economic development in Boston, and I don't, and I don't mean you guys at all. Don't get me wrong. Again, it's my, it, it's the burr in the saddle. It's the bee in the bonnet about people. And I've heard officials say there's no place for economic development beyond agriculture in a small town, and that will just drive more and more young people away, more and more young families away. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but we've got to figure out how to increase economic, economic development in, in rural communities from infrastructure to, to, to skills training to, to get away from this advanced manufacturing is the savior of Western Massachusetts because it's folly. As great, as great jobs as they are, it's, it's not an economic driver. Um, and I don't see, a, I don't, I don't see a pathway. And again, I understand, Natalie, you and I have had, I don't know how many conversations about economic development and the Rural Jobs Act and, and investments, <clears throat> but unless there's a pot of money for equity uh, out here, it, it, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, maybe the four counties should just form Western Massachusetts as a state because Boston doesn't understand, and nor do they care, uh, until we are until our population drops so dramatically that we are such a huge drain on on the rest of the state that they actually set up and care. I had a conversation with with someone who's pretty invested in um, population these days because of his role in the legislature, and we were joking around, saying, "Boy, it's almost not going to be representation without." whatever the phrase is, because you can't do, you guys cannot do the same job that someone who lives in Dorchester can do. You cannot possibly cover your territory in the same way that someone from an urban city is. So you, you, it, it's just not possible. So if they want to, we've got to figure out this population shift. Um, and I just don't see anything happening. I'll leave it at that. 
because I'm guessing because I, I don't think that any of the economic um, stuff that that you that you introduced in the last session passed, unless I'm wrong again, but I don't think so. Okay. Oh, it passed. Uh, <laughs> What's that? What's that? It passed. It was just vetoed. It was okay. vetoed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask Brian to, if he has any uh, comments he'd like to make that we haven't talked about. Then I'll turn it back to, to Joe and Natalie, see if you want to respond to anything that you've heard. Okay. Brian? Um, I have a couple of things. Uh, I just want to really say thank you for your help with Tatum Mill Road. Um, <laughs> that project has been, that project has preceded my time here. Um, and that, that we could get no traction. Um, so I really appreciate your help. Um, now we have a path forward where we didn't have one before. So I, we really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and I think your continued help, um, I, I think we'll need that as we, as this moves forward. Um, so thank you. Um, Joyce touched on uh, on the education funding piece uh, and also the, the police reform piece that, that we have concerns about in terms of our budget. Um, this is something that's been talked about <laughs> probably everywhere you've heard uh, in terms of the vaccine rollout, it's been particularly difficult for us to know how to communicate to our residents and provide them the correct information. Um, because initially we were pointing people to the to the state website, and then we found out that there's going to be so as an example, we found out there's going to be clinics at Greenfield, but the links for the Greenfield clinic aren't on the state website that we were telling people to, and it's just been it's just been really difficult to give people the timely and correct information. Um, I, I think we're, we're getting better, um, but it, it was really difficult to try to, to try to tell people where to go. It, it was easier when we were dealing with, with first responders in healthcare, um, cause it was really kind of employer-based. I think it was a little bit easier, but as we get to the, uh, as to the general public, it's been more difficult. And with, I assume we have a, a larger number of people 65 and over than we do 75 and over. And if we don't get those issues worked out, it's the, the issue is just gonna it's just gonna get more difficult to contain. Um, but other than that, it's it's been quite the year. <laughs> We've just kind of been uh, rolling with the punches, but uh, we just really really appreciate your support. Okay, uh, Natalie or Joe, do you? Want to respond to anything you've heard, or add, or some additional comments? Natalie, do you want to go first since I kicked off? Or no? Okay, all right. Um, thank you. Uh, these are such important comments. I'll go super quickly um, on pilot. Absolutely, uh, Natalie and I are absolutely engaged with Adam. Um, both Natalie and I, in two previous budgets, introduced pilot amendments. Um, that built off of Adam's work before we got in. Um, so we're completely there. We were at the auditor's rollout. We're completely supportive of this legislation. I'm speaking for you here, Natalie, but I know it's true. Um, on Haydenville Road, really, my hat goes off to Natalie. Um, she has led here. I'm happy to support, and Elena from my team has been part of it, but really, um, complete hat tip to Natalie. Uh, on the host committee, community agreements, I'd love to figure out how we could advocate, you know, so, you know, Brian, I'd love to work with Natalie to help understand where those host community agreements are and um, help nudge. We do that all the time. You know, sometimes just a little nudge um, is, can be useful from an office. So if that's useful, absolutely. On, on education, I didn't touch enough and I wish I had. So it's one of the places where I know Natalie has as well, but I focused a lot. Um, so in the last budget, we got, for example, a study of how um, we fund education um, into the budget and that was completed and it gave us quite a lot of data. Um, and it really confirmed what in fact, uh, folks from Gil Montague were the first ones to crack it, you know, that Western Massachusetts pays a disproportionate share um, uh, of education funding from our communities. It's one of the things that absolutely has to be remedied. Um, I'm also filing a couple of special education bills uh, because I do think that with the Student Opportunity Act, which was fine and good, in a lot of ways, we really missed the boat on SPED funding. 
and that's a, a quite a burden for our towns. Uh, and it's an area I, I really want to make improvements on for myself. Um, on the food program um, and the funding of the food program, that is something the Senate's tuned into, the unfunded mandate of giving out um, food for free. I think everybody wants food security. I, I hear that's what you want too, but um, if we don't pay the infrastructure costs, then communities like Waitley are completely burdened. And um, I know that uh, Sen I, I'd written to Senate Ways and Means about this um, and they're tuned in. On um, police reform, I'm really glad you raised it. I'm so glad. And this is an area where Natalie and I have had lots of good conversations. Um, so I, you know, we've heard some similar, not exact, but similar concerns. And I did touch base with the Senate president, Senate Ways and Means, and the chairs of the committee that wrote the bill with some of the concerns we've heard. And what I would love is, you know, if there is a coordinated conversation and it sounds, Jonathan, like you're having one, um, I, boy, I'd like to be able to take leadership um, a very cogent, very sharp, um, uh, decisive list of concerns and, and take it really quickly. Um, when I did some due diligence in preparation for meetings like these, you know, what I heard was, okay, you know, let's get this in writing, let's get it on the record, but it's just so early in the process. They're still figuring it out. So, so many inputs have to go in um, to, in the you know, to, to craft the implementation path. So I think raising concerns now is absolutely appropriate and getting them to us as soon as you possibly can. Um, and if you want to amass numbers of communities better um, so that we can go in on your behalf. It's, it's, um, it's something that I know that I, and I, I'm speaking, I know Natalie too cares a lot about this. Um, uh, one of the things that we didn't mention um, was water sewer infrastructure work, which we continue to make gains on. We're gonna give a, um, quite a large summit um, where we, we've been working with Secretary Theo Herides um, to be able to open up the MVP uh, grant program to water sewer infrastructure work. Um, and our teams have also been working on this one single application um, with MassWorks. And so there's a, a forum coming up. And um, uh, so hopefully we'll see folks from Waitley there. Um, and then uh, on vaccines, I, I just put a little link to something that we are maintaining because I do agree that the state's um, vaccine rollout has been flawed. It's a, another place where the Western delegation has totally locked arms, both in terms of the kind of overarching state structure that we need, and then especially for Western Massachusetts in terms of the, the amount of vaccine that's equitable and the attention to the numbers of sites that are needed for a rural community. Uh, and I'll stop there. Thanks, Joe. And I want to give a hat tip to you for the role that you've played not only in the region but statewide when it's come to public health and certainly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, there's not been a stronger voice in these rooms in Boston advocating uh, for, for regional equity and you've just been incredible. So I want to thank you for, for all of your efforts there on our behalfs. Um, so you mentioned pilot, I will be the house lead on the pilot legislation alongside Senator Hines. Uh, so I'm looking forward to leading that on the House side and really raising awareness to, to that area. Um, education, as Joe said, it, it's certainly been on our radar. Uh, we were able to get the Rural Schools Commission through and we'll be really looking at that low and declining enrollment piece and how that is impacting our, our communities as, as well as, as the Commonwealth as a whole. Um, working with Collaborative for Educational Services out of Northampton to work with all of our superintendents to really delve deep into the COVID impact, including how many more students were seeing homeschooled and what that would look like uh, for, for our schools, particularly our regional schools. Um, so that is something we're focused on going forward. With police reform, um, I know Chief Pachorek has been very active on this. I, I've spoken with him as early as this afternoon. Um, I'm connecting him with Hampshire County folks too. Uh, and, and to just reiterate what Joe has said, you know, a, you know, a one pager that is laser focused on what the concerns would be uh, or a meeting, whatever, both, we do both. Uh, it would really be helpful for us as we're having these conversations in Boston for to help shape that conversation and make sure we're lifting up the concerns that we're hearing from our police chiefs and, and our communities. 
Um, I, Joe talked a little bit about water sewer and the one stop application that's being rolled out for mass works. I just want to point out one of these new programs that we were able to fund. It was originally a $10 million program. Senator Adam Hines was able to boost it up to 20 million. I know Joe was a big supporter of this on the Senate side. It's a rural infrastructure grant program. This will be a new funding program under that one stop mass works application. So definitely take a look at that if you haven't already, because that is a new pot of funding that's available. Um, and then John, you mentioned economic development and population shifts, conversations that are near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah, Senator Hines sponsored the Rural Growth Fund on the Senate side, I sponsored it on the House side. We were able to get it through House and Senate, through Conference Committee. It was a monumental win for rural communities across the Commonwealth. Um, the governor's veto came as an absolute surprise, absolute shock, and we'll be following up directly with the governor to um, talk about the facts about the program uh, and talk with Secretary Keneally uh, to, to hopefully bring him on board. We've talked with House leadership. I know Senate leadership is, has also been supportive of this, uh, which is evidenced by the fact that we were able to get it through the House and the Senate this year. Um, in our meeting with Secretary Keneally that we're hoping to schedule, uh, not only between Senator Hines and I, but the Rural Caucus is also hoping to sit down with him uh, to ensure that the governor is going to deliver on the promise that he made in his veto when he said that he was going to directly invest in our rural communities. Um, as you can imagine, we might have some ideas that could be helpful in shaping where that money could go and we'd like to be a part of that conversation. So that's something that, that I would welcome your partnership on, John, and, and thank you for bringing that up. Okay, thank, thank you, uh, Natalie and Joe. Uh, before we leave this uh, discussion, I'd like to bring up something that's gonna happen to happen in Waitley this year. We're gonna celebrate our 250th anniversary of the incorporation of the town. Uh, the date is April 26th and well, 2021. Uh, and we're deciding uh, how to celebrate that in town. And, and one thing that I mentioned and I, well, I'd like to proceed is if we could get a uh, either proclamation or statement, whatever you wanna call it from the governor's office recognizing the incorporation of the town on uh, April 26th. Uh, we're proposing to have a select board meeting, I, I guess on that day and, and maybe make some mention of, of that say proclamation. And I guess right now, I, I don't know if anybody else in town, not to, and to my knowledge, nobody else has asked the uh, people in Boston for a proclamation on that. So I don't know if Brian has done anything or not, but uh, I guess I, uh, maybe that's a, an opportunity for either of you to, to do something to help us. And I, I guess keep the April 26th date open on your calendar for now. Uh, if we decide to proceed with something, a meeting on that date, uh, we'll let you know and we'd like to invite you to that, to that meeting and and either present a proclamation or, or, or say something. So uh, please keep that, that day open for now, April 26th. It's on the calendar. That's and absolutely. <laughs> Happy to help with a proclamation. Yeah, uh, and a okay. citation, I would imagine if that would be useful, a Senate citation and a House cit citation. Whatever, whatever, we'll whatever you'd like to do. Uh, okay, before we leave, uh, Last call, uh, Joyce or Jonathan or Brian, anything else? No, I, I, I would just, you know, the police stuff, I'm gonna follow up with you guys on because it's it, it's 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 really a big deal and and I don't have a lot of confidence, but we need, we need something to, I don't know what it is. And Natalie, I'm happy to work with you on the economic development piece. I don't get it. I do get it. No, I apologize. I, I totally get it. And, uh, and again, if I sound pessimistic, well, I apologize, but you know, it, it just the, the legislation is being written by people who've never been to Western Massachusetts, let alone live here. Uh, so. Okay, Joyce, Thank you. Joyce, last comment. 
Oh, I could go on all night, but they probably don't want to hear me talk about... Um, Call anytime, Joyce. Uh, <laughs> no, no, just the, it's just kind of the big picture sometimes is that budgets get scrutinized every year, but um, those tax breaks that are given to companies don't get scrutinized every year. Yeah. We get level funded. They don't get level funded. Theirs goes up every year as the whatever percentage. So... Uh, that's not a local issue necessarily. That's a statewide issue. It keeps it so the state doesn't have enough money to to fund what we need to fund. So that's, a, you know, it's not a meeting where Joyce shows up where we don't talk about uh, that sort of thing. So uh, I had put that through that in, though it's not a local issue. I love that you did. Um, <laughs> revenue, really robust revenue growth is really what's needed and, and fairly. Okay. Hey, Fred, I'm sorry. Hey, Senator Comerford, if, if we do pull off this four county meeting, um, your assistance with we intend to invite Senator Brownsberger to the to the Zoom as the author of police reform. Um, anything you can do to get him to 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 say yes would be wonderful, and I'll let you know when when that goes out. Sure. Actually, Will was one of the people I went to, John, um, when I heard. Um, and when Natalie and I both heard some concerns and I went to mind meld um, with him because um, again, and his, his uh, I could show you the text thread we have and um, notes from my conversation. You know, he was, he was probably the most adamant that there's lots of, there's lots of road to walk as this gets developed. And to, to think right now that it's the future's written is, is the wrong position. You know, the, the bill's been written, the implementation is not. Um, and that's why we exist to serve you, right? Um, we exist to make sure that our community's voices are integrated into the implementation. So um, again, I, you know, I, I don't wanna undercut your skepticism or your pessimism, they're, they're yours to have. Um, but but I, I, I do think we have to fight and we will on this. And I, and I think it's gonna take the kind of sharp analysis that you're gonna bring with the other communities, um, that's gonna make all the difference and calling us to action and sounding the alarm about the, the specific points that you think are gonna go super bad, badly for Western Mass. That We don't want that to happen. Okay, I'll be in touch, thank you. Okay, uh, in closing, I guess I'd like to thank uh, Joe and, and Natalie for your participation in our select board meeting tonight. and. Uh, uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, sh uh, share our comments with you, and 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 I know you're taking good notes and, and are aware of what we're we're talking about. So uh, we hope this is uh, as fruitful for you as it as it was for us this evening. So and uh, and we always welcome you to our future meetings. Something you want to come talk about or get our reaction to, please feel free to coordinate with, with Brian. Uh, future activities if, if you so choose so thank you so much thank you Fred okay. grateful for you thank all thank you all thank you see Bye. you later okay Move, moving on uh, I see we have uh, uh, FCAT is uh, broadcasting is that true is FCAT is broadcasting live right now? I don't it's, think so. Normally, if they're streaming, there's another banner on top of the little Zoom meeting, and it's not there. I sh just sent a message to Jonathan in the chat to ask about that. Oh, oh okay, because I see him. But he's not responded to my chat yet. You're not talking about me, are you, Joyce? No, the other Jonathan, no. Jonathan Boshin. Yeah, I thought so. Just, yeah. yeah, okay, I thought they were on, but okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, the schedule appointments we we had one at, we have one at was it six thirty we're we're a little late but uh, sorry for it sorry for the delay uh, both uh, Michael and and Stephen uh, uh, I think you uh, may find it useful to hear what our comments were our concerns some related to your business I, I think so yes uh, from there we'll proceed I I guess you. Uh, you want to have some preliminary discussion with us on a proposed uh, marijuana cultivation establishment that you want to do, uh, I guess, in, in Whateley. So yeah. I'll turn it over to, to both of you. Okay, uh, it's good to be 
back and see your faces again, uh, even in the distance. Um, we, we've had a lot of struggles getting the marijuana cultivation thing going. And uh, this morning, for instance, which is relevant to what some of the discussion was, I gave a talk down at Wellspring Collective, which is a big greenhouse growing um, vegetable produce for Indian Orchard in Springfield. And um, a part of uh, the Cannabis Commission, we have to do some things for social equity, even if we haven't started. Um, and so that I gave three talks actually to them and uh, one on crop production, on nutrients, and then on hydroponics today. But coming back, we're in the very preliminary uh, uh, position of uh, being able to discuss with you our plans to come back to Waitley to be begin a uh, cultivation business. We have um, the uh, previous host community agreement that we had with you, which we couldn't get off the ground. And I won't go into why we couldn't, but we are intending to proceed. We have a, a partner who is in the process of purchasing some land. We're not at the stage where we can fully disclose that yet, but it will not be in ag residential. It will be on commercial land and it will not have impact on neighbors as we had before. And we think this is a, a positive thing um, for us to move ahead with on that sort of land. Um, we should know in uh, a couple of days uh, the, the situation with the land and if I could uh, send back to you uh, the copy of the host community agreement with maybe when we get the information that we need to have for changes in location in there uh, so that we could update that and for you to respond. Uh, Brian will probably, I'll send it to you, Brian, and um, uh, we go from there. So you can expect to hear from us very soon um, about this because we want to get going uh, very soon. The lady who is uh, partnering with us also wants to start a um, storage uh, storage business where people come, what do you call it? Self-storage. Self-storage business uh, adjacent to where we'll be uh, establishing our project as well. Dual use. So it'll be a dual use project and I think you will find it quite intriguing what we are going to propose. Okay, that so sounds interesting. I guess we're <laughs> waiting to hear where it's, where it's going to be at. And I, I assume you said commercial area. This is a, an area that's currently zoned as commercial. Correct. All right, okay. Okay, Does anybody have any questions? Comments? Not at this point. Uh, Not at this I, point, yeah. I guess we encourage whatever you're trying to do. You yeah, were, we, we want to come yeah. back and be able to contribute to the town as well. So we're not opposed to that. If we get successful, then you get a inf infusion of money as well. Okay. Is, is this, are you proposing something similar to this in uh, other towns uh, in the area? No, we are concentrating on Waitley. Okay. Um, if I understand the question correctly. Well, I, no, I, I, my question is, why are you focused you singularly on Waitley? Well, we started here in Waitley and we have a little affinity to coming back to Waitley. We tried to link up with some other people because funding in this area is very hard to get. And so most of the host community agreements that you've already done probably are, are lacking in some funding to get off the ground. We have still a provisional license. And so we have uh, some small funding available. And if we have to start in a small way and build up from there, we will do that. But we have some opportunity. We hope to get some more significant funding as well. We're talking to a couple of people about that, but we won't have to worry about getting the land because somebody else wants that for the self storage and is gonna work with us on that. Okay. Can you can you 
uh, I'm unfamiliar with the process. So you have a provisional license and you're allowed to transfer that to a different yeah. location. Correct. What are the requirements for that? You mentioned the host community agreement. Is there a yes. requirement for a community outreach meeting? Yes, we will probably need to do a community outreach meeting. Um, we would also need to do the uh, ho um, go through the planning board and zoning committee. So it's as if we're starting from scratch, but we have a lot of experience in that now. And so and our face isn't totally foreign to you guys, um, even though I've got a little grayer. Uh, yeah, um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't gray. <laughs> Do I get closer? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so with the provisional license in hand, it, I assume the timeline will be a lot shorter. Correct. Yes. Yeah, we only have to get the local town approvals. Then we can go back to the Cannabis Control Commission. And um, when we get your approvals, we file a uh, change of location. Change of location. When they approve that, we can start building out and then we get their final approval. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. People without a provisional license are still way behind and getting to that stage. And we have to renew the provisional license every year. It is currently renewed until February 14, 2022. Okay, so when you're ready to present to us, you'll- We will come back. Coordinate with, with Brian. Uh, yep. Okay. You see this happening soon, like within the next month or two, or you don't know? Oh, it'll happen before yes. a month. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're we're being very expeditious with it. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other comments on this item? No. Okay. Well, thank you, Michael and and Stephen, for thank sharing you. the preliminary information with us, and I guess we we'll look forward to to uh, hearing more more from you, so. Yeah, we, we hope to swing back to Ryan within a week. Yes, thank, if we can. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. And we'll sign off now to let you continue your business. Okay. See, we sort of crashed in a little early. Well, that's fine, <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah, public right. meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I know it. And it was interesting to me. Yeah. I was associate dean looking out for the uh, nutrition education program uh, as part of that role. And so those sort of things are sort of interesting to me as well. Okay, enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, you Thank guys you. too. Thank, Thank you. you we'll leave now. Have a good one. And I'll look, I'll look forward to hearing more about Wellspring. They're, they're great people over there. Yes. They are, they're yeah, wonderful yeah. people. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's an Jonathan. Indian orchard on Pinevale Street. Have yeah, if, if if anyone has has never seen hydroponic growing, uh, go visit it. There's not a speck yeah. of dirt used. They wear white suits from head to toe. Um, it is it, it's it's remarkable um, yeah. to to see it happen, and it's in a in an economically, relatively speaking, an economically depressed part of, of Springfield. Yeah. Um, so it's a job creator. It's 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 climate, it's climate positive. Um, Fresh just, food. They're great. No food yep. miles. Yeah. Yeah. No. Wonder. I can I can measure mention one other thing. I work with another partner who's starting up a twenty two acre greenhouse project in Maine, and they're also wanting to bring uh, the project to Massachusetts and looking for some farmland to do that. So that's a possibility that we could bring to Whateley as well, to grow um, not lettuce, but higher value crops like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and the likes. The, the idea of getting uh, this food year round into supermarkets and to do social programs as well. So uh, we're trying to network on a whole lot of things at the same time. Great. OK, thank you. Thanks Economic again. development. <laughs> Okay, moving, moving on with our agenda this evening. Uh, next item is the uh, COVID-19 state of emergency. Brian, is there anything we need to discuss here? Not at this point. Uh, thankfully, the, the cases are way down in town. 
Um, I think we're at one active case, um, with the exception of with the exception of UMass. I think right. overall cases are down. Um, so I, I, at some point, I think we should have a conversation about about reopening the town offices, um, likely on a limited basis again. But um, I'm keen to uh, probably push in that discussion till our next meeting. Um, I talked with Lynn. Uh, you know, the next real estate taxes we'll be doing May. Um, there's excise taxes that are going out soon, um, but we don't really have a big surge of, that's not the right word these days, but um, a real influx of people coming in. So, um, but I wanna be mindful that that one aspect of our, of, of our job is public service and some people need to come in. I would just point out that the reason that you've seen cases go down is partially because of the uh, extra steps that it, and measures that have been implemented to reduce uh, crowds uh, at a larger level. Um, <clears throat> personally, I'm a little nervous about the 40% thing uh, statewide because, again, you take steps and it, it, it's a it's a pendulum. So when we're talking about it here in Whitley, I think we've got to be very cautious. And understanding that we will see an uptick potentially if um, if we start to go back to normal too quickly. Okay, okay. moving on. Next item uh, under all business is uh, discuss the status of previously funded capital projects and future capital projects. Brian, I think you sent us a list uh, in the packet. Yep. Uh, So I should, you should be able to see that on your screen. Right, yes, see that. I just wanted to just provide the board a quick update with, with the capital projects that have been funded. This is an ongoing list that I keep. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Off a page, okay. Um, so this is, this is starting in 2017. And Fred, this is one that you and I have talked about a lot and it's it's been funded for a while and it's, Right. really about time I think we get it done. It's the town office build out here, the additional offices. Um, it's something that we put off because really there there really hasn't been a big outcry for it. Um, Brian, and it could, you, could you zoom in a little bit, please? Yep. And it doesn't really affect anybody outside of, uh, doesn't really affect anybody outside of the, of the employees here, but I think it's something that, that, we have money to do. We said we we're going to do it, so I think it's it, it's time to do it, um, and it'll also help spread some people out on a on a permanent basis, in case COVID doesn't go away as quick as we would like it to. Plus, in an opportune time to to work in a building without people coming and going for meetings or the public coming in right now. So yeah, so that's really all that's outstanding from from 2017. Okay. Uh, the other thing you see here is maintenance shed. That was uh, a shed at the Blue School, which was repurposed for the, um, the softball field construction project. Uh, 2018, there's, there was money for IT upgrades. Really the last one that we were trying to figure out was, was we're trying to get some automated backup in place. Um, right now, um, we have sort of these individual hard drives that we're backing up with. Um, there was a regional IT study done recently about um, how we could um, how we could meet multiple communities' needs, um, IT needs, um, but that's really gone quiet lately. I was hoping something would come out of that, but um, something is still on the list. Um, 2019 metal roof repairs. Um, there was a while there where we noticed some some new leaks on the on our ceiling tiles, um, and it really hasn't come back. So it's money that we have not spent. Okay, uh, but that's really minor. Um, this is 2020. So the, the one at 25%, that's the water merger project that we are hopefully kicking into high gear this year um, because it really needs to get done, in my opinion. Um, 
And then from last year, we have uh, the water department is still working to install booster pumps at the main pump house. There's money appropriated for electrical upgrades um, at the Westbrook Road pump station. And actually something that's not on here is in combination with that, they're looking to install a generator uh, at the Westbrook Road pump station. So those on Westbrook Road can have water when there's no power. Um, I think one person might be happy about that. Mm. I and, more than one, more than one probably. The whole <laughs> street's gonna be happy about the that. The whole street will be happy. Um, and then the, the top one there is telecommunications equipment. That's that's referring to the, the new uh, radios for the fire and police department. Um, there'll be another another warrant article to, to fund the remaining half of that, but I know those are not the first round of have not been purchased yet. There hasn't been an opportunity yet um, for them to make that purchase. And, and we're at, for that program, we're really at the mercy of, of the state and how quick they're moving that forward. Um, but we've, we've, I haven't touched on everything that we've gotten done, but there's a lot of stuff that's, um, that's been done. In looking at this list, I mean, the two things that, that stick out and I think are worth focusing on is the town office renovations and the water merger. Um, but I just wanted to provide that update. Right. And I don't know if there are any questions on that. Okay. And you've got a call out now for uh, projects from the uh, department heads? Yeah, the, the, yep. The first meeting of the, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee will be on the 18th. Okay. So um, it's past the deadline to submit capital projects, but if there are capital projects out there that haven't been submitted, we would love to hear about them. Do we need numbers with the hearing about them or can numbers come a little bit later? Numbers can come a little bit later. Um, the CIPC has taken the position that they're trying to look at, at need instead of um, financial ability when they look at the project. So um, getting the projects and, and getting the information about the projects is important. And again, we're, we've developed a 10-year plan, a 10-year capital plan. So projects for next fiscal year or 10 fiscal years from now, that's what we want to get on the plan so we can start planning for some of these larger purchases. Okay. Well, isn't it fair to say that need is a somewhat subjective thing? Yes. Well, it's not only need for that project, but need, I guess, compared to other needs in the town, I guess, what's priority? Right, and all, all very subjective. Right, and, and yeah. the other thing you notice on, on the list, I, I think we've tried to look at, at, I guess you call it a higher cost projects. Most of these are over, I think, what, 5,000 was the dollar limit or, or early, earlier we were going by a dollar limit and, like Brian is saying, not not today, but most of these are major projects, as you can see, over five thousand dollars. So I guess keep that in mind when you're submitting projects. Uh, and, and I think maybe the view is, if it was a small project, that maybe that department could do it within their own budget. Well, I, I've got a question on this as I'm as I'm looking at a little bit more closely. I thought initially this was more about upgrades as opposed to typical purchases, but I see things like pickup truck replacement on here. But yet, unless I'm missing it, I don't see. Oh yeah, I do. I'm sorry. Never mind. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Never mind. Okay. Okay. So these are really these are taken from the funding articles and from the from the town meeting warrants. Is there a list of things that were turned down flat? They would be listed on the, they, they would remain listed on the capital plan. They would, okay. Yep. Okay. Ready to move on? Yep. Okay, uh, next new business is to renew the insurance policy for the center school. 
Brian, I think you've sent us the, the quote for the, the policy, which looks similar, I think, similar type of, of insurance and uh, what similar price as we've had last year with the same yeah. company, same insurance company. Yeah, it's the policy renewal. Policy renewal, okay. And what that covers is vandalism to the building, but nothing for contents or what was the other item, terrorists, attacks or whatever, I think. Right. So we still need some, some insurance on, on, on the building. And, and I, decide what to do with it. Okay. And my concern, Fred, is that that conversation has come to a screeching halt from what I can gather. On what to decide with the building? Yep. Uh, yes, and I, I guess it hasn't come up as a maybe a high enough priority right now. So, uh, well, why are we, we get a when are we going to put on an RFP? And it never happened because of COVID and everything else. Well, that was part of it. Why wouldn't we do an RFP? I think we're going to do an RFI. Same thing. Okay, whatever. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's not the same thing, Brian. But I'm just, you know. Yeah. Yep. But 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 I think this board perhaps should should inflict a deadline for having that RFI at least drafted, and then we can make another deadline for when it gets out there. Well, was was that on our list of, of priority projects, priorities? Brian, where did that stand? I, I don't remember. We, we we last talked about it in what, October, November last year, sometime? Yeah, I can. It was in the poll sometime, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I missed that meeting. But I mean, if it's not a priority, it's got to be. We're spending another $4,500 on insurance. Come on. Well, that and, and some electricity, I guess. To... Yeah. That's, ins that's insignificant, I got to believe. Right. Yes. Well, yeah, that's, uh, I, I guess, something with uh, maybe this. Uh, calendar year, we should be focusing on trying to trying to move along a decision on what to do with that building. And yeah. whether it's RFI, RFP, or RFQ, or whatever. Yeah, we, we moved it from, it was a low priority. And then I think at the meeting, we moved it to a high priority. Yeah. Well, and I get, you know, COVID's gotten in the way, but it, it it strikes me, and again, this is not a, a finger pointing exercise at all because everyone is just out straight. But it, it doesn't strike me that it's a high priority if, if nothing has happened between October and, and now. And I just think that it's time to put a little, and I'm happy to work with whomever on this. You know, I, I, I've done a couple of these in my life and I'm not going to write it, but I'm happy to to advise. And but we got to get this done. Yeah, uh, yeah. We probably need to do an RFI, and, and I, I guess I offered to to help. And I mentioned this uh, several months ago. To that we need a we sh we should have a, a public information meeting on discussing options for maybe options for, for the building. We, we haven't had that. The committee has got together and they did get some, some input. And yes, we had the report. The report is on our website. Uh, maybe after we do an RFI to see what response we get to, to do that. Uh, but there's other, other things that need to be discussed rel more related to uh, I guess financial aspects of whatever we, we do, which was not discussed in very much detail, because uh, that it was the com the committee decided that shouldn't be the focus of what happens to building, looking at the financing of it. But 
it 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 is uh, it, it is a, a concern, and, and I think when it comes down to the the final uh, decision, and, and I've said this before, the you know the I think the, the three of us board members have our own opinions of what should be done with the building. And I, I think we need more public input at maybe a, an annual town meeting or a special town meeting to bring this out in the open and, and, and get direct feedback comments. Uh, once, once we have more information on, on the, the financial impacts of it, we don't have that yet. And it hasn't been presented yet. I, I've got information on it from the committee and talking to realtors, developers, other people uh, of what the impacts of that may be on the town. And, and also we haven't talked to finance committee either of, of yeah. what's happening with, with the building, how it would impact finances. Hey, Fred, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna push back a little bit because I think all those things are important pieces of information to gather, but I think that they're gonna be all much better informed after we have results from an RFI so we can see what interest people have in it and what purposes people think that it's right. a possible site for, what costs they would pick up, what costs they wouldn't pick up. The RFI will give us so much data that will make the conversations in a public hearing or a town meeting or whatever so much more informed and valuable. Right now, the conversations would be around heartstrings, a lot of them. And heartstrings are important, but heartstrings can be impacted by data and we don't have right. data. So the RFI I think should happen right. like tomorrow. Well, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I don't know if tomorrow is the right time, but well, it, whenever. I, that was it. for impact. Okay. Okay. okay, Joyce. Um, I think um, the, the my understanding of where we left it was, was that we shouldn't have any more um, town meetings where we try to get people's input until we had some concrete options. And that was the point of the RFI. Right. So right. I guess the question right. I'd like to ask of Brian is, what do you think is a reasonable time frame for, <clears throat> for getting an RFI out? Presumably it's something that we have to vote on at a meeting, um, which makes it N times two weeks. <laughs> so we, we make the deadline two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. Which of those, given how full your plate is, is a reasonable time frame for getting an RFI out on this? I mean, I guess so. It's all it's all a matter of of, of how we prioritize my time, um, and that's gonna that's gonna lead us into a, a conversation, which is under town administrative updates about about grant opportunities and things like that. Um, if this is a high priority, it's something, if it's the highest priority, it's something we could, I mean, we could have a draft for, for the next select board meeting, I would think. Um, but if there's other stuff that that we want to get done, then, it, then let's say two meetings from now, um, it's going to take some time. You know, the focus is going to shift pretty soon to, to trying to get budgets done and we're going to have meetings with the finance committee and a lot of my time is going to be taken up doing that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, we could get something out if, if that's what we want to focus on by the next meeting um, or two meetings or, or three meetings. Um, are we involving, I, I guess is the question is, are we involving the, the committee at all or is this something that we want to do internally? Because if we're going to involve the committee, I would say it's going to take a little while longer to I think the committee, push out. I think the committee, personally speaking, strictly, obviously, the committee gave us the report. We have that yep. information. People who have been interested in it have digested it via reading it on the on the website. And it's pretty clear that people are saying we need data next. Um, right. That being said, you know nothing's going to happen before the the next fiscal year. So we're going to do it smartly. But I'm going to suggest that obviously budget seasons critically important. But as long as we have a schedule and a deadline for when the RFI will go out, once the budget season has passed us by, 
I think that's fine. I don't, I don't want to rush this. My, my point is, is that if we don't set a deadline and a, and a schedule, it's just going to keep bleeding, bleeding out. Right. I, I guess I, rather than deciding tonight, I guess I'd like to, as Brian, think about it. And if we talk about other items on the, on the agenda here is how that fits in it, and come back with us, maybe come back to the board at the next meeting and decide what you think would be appropriate for this item. Mm. Yeah, we put it on next meeting's agenda to make a decision about a deadline. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so Fred, if, if I could real quick, this is the, this is what we had talked about for the, for the priority project list. Okay. This was for the past year. So manganese treatment system, that's pretty much wrapped up. Williamsburg Road Bridge replacement, that's wrapped up. Water systems merger, that's something we're prioritizing now. Yeah. Um, capital planning long range facilities, that's, that's kind of been left out there. <laughs> Joyce, we'll like this one. Comcast, FCAT, live broadcast at town offices. Um, that's yeah. something that I've um, yeah. been trying working to work on through. <laughs> um, Chestnut Plain Road sidewalks, those, well, at least phase one is done. We have to talk about how we're going to get the other quarter of those sidewalks done. Um, and then again, we have center school reuse, 250 if that's, that's not much for that Poplar Hill Road that was done. Um, so really what's remaining here uh, of the top priorities is center school um, and then town office renovations up here and water systems merger. Most of these other ones have been, have been done. Um, right. So maybe, sorry. maybe those are three ones that we focus on as we, as we go into the spring and uh, next fiscal year. Well, that and I think we've got to look at the uh, the uh, grant opportunities you listed to us on the page to see if which ones we want to pursue and not, and the timing of that and how that's going to fit in. Right. Yeah. It's it's always a <laughs> it's always a balancing act. Yeah. Like you've got other things to do rather than these three. So <laughs> things. So okay. Okay, for this item, okay. Yep. Next item, new business is to discuss and vote to appoint Amy Schrader, Jacob Schrader, and Chris Williams to the Recreation Commission. Are we- I'd like to nominate Amy Schrader. Uh, sorry, I just lost the names. I'd like to nominate Amy Schrader. Amy Schrader. Jacob Schrader and Chris Williams to the Recreation Committee. I'll second it. Are we losing members because we're adding three? Or I, I I would put it in past tense, Fred. We have lost members. We've lost members. So with these three, what are we gonna? How many would you have? We'll be we'll be we'll be a full load of nine. Of nine, okay. We should make those dual positions like overlapping boards, so they have to serve on another committee too. Exactly. Right. And this this Amy Schrader. You think we should have her on there? That was debated significantly. That was? Well, the only reason we took her was because we wanted her husband. Oh, yeah, I know, Jacob, yeah. <laughs> you want okay. us to run Corey checks? Oh, that's true. Amy, you're in trouble. Uh-oh. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I would like to point out that we would have uh, predominantly you know, male participation if we don't have Amy in there. And I think we, in the, in the efforts of diversity and inclusion, we need to keep as many female members on that committee as we can have. Amy would be three of nine. No, four of nine, four of nine. So it's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's pretty even. You're getting there. You're getting there. You're getting it's up to 50, 50. That's yeah. the, it's always been 50, 50. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, She's one of three, so I guess it comes as a package, right? We get all three or none? Yeah, no. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's vote on this. Okay, we got a motion, second. Okay, uh, Jonathan, yeah, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Yep. Brad, yes. Congratulations, Amy, Jacob, and Chris.
When's the next meeting? I got to schedule that. Yeah. Oh, I have a quick question. Have we decided to renew the insurance policy for the center school? Is that thing, something a vote needs to happen oh, today yeah. on? Or? Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Okay. I move that we renew the insurance policy for the center school. Second. Okay, a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay. Moving on, uh, town administrator updates. Brian? Yeah, so the reason I was hesitating about the center school stuff is there are a lot of grant opportunities coming up over the next month, two months. Um, and these obviously take time to pull together and, and write grants and, and figure those things out. So um, this culvert, I'll just run through them quickly. The culvert replacement municipal assistance grant, that's something that we've applied for in the past. And back to Jonathan's point about Western Mass not getting any money. Um, we've been denied, we've tried three times, we've been denied three times. First two times it was for uh, culvert on Williamsburg Road. The other one was um, to fix culvert um, on Christian Lane, closer to uh, State Road. Um, and that we also didn't, we also were not awarded that uh, last year. Um, I'll talk to Keith, but I think that's probably something we would reapply for. Um, shared winter streets and spaces. We applied for this and we were denied. This was to help, ex this was to extend the sidewalk at the elementary school um, and to, to put in some other safety measures um, around the elementary school in terms of um, flashing speed signs and such. And, and that was denied. Um, it was denied twice, actually. Um, so we may have to figure something else out for that one if we want to apply to it. Um, this is a cohort replacement grant. The previous one I was talking about was if we want to su uh, uh, submit a pre-RFR expression of interest. Um, there's this new program, One Stop for Community Growth. I think Jonathan and I are going to try to connect next week um, to talk about this program a little bit more. Expression of interests are due um, early April. So the state has has wrapped up these existing programs and put a new bow on them and called them One Stop for Community Growth. Um, there's a couple new programs. One, one that I think Natalie touched on was the Rural and Small Town Development Fund. This is something that that may be helpful to us if if we can figure out um, a good project for that. The one above is community planning. I think could also help us. Um, in, especially if we wanted to focus, try to focus on the exit 24 area. Uh, so how the program works is that we submit an expression of interest and it goes to somebody somewhere. I don't know if they're, I don't know which department it's in. I don't know if it's uh, Department of House and Community Development or Mass DOT. And they're supposed to respond to us um, and let us know what, grant programs we may be eligible for. Um, so Brian, we'll didn't, I, didn't you and I talk that we have a, we believe that we have a better shot at the rural and small town development fund as opposed to the community planning fund? Yeah, so what, so what happens is we'll submit an expression of interest, a general expression of interest that, that is submitted. And then they will have a conversation with us about what grant programs they think we will be eligible for. Uh, so rural and small town development fund, they'll, they'll actually pay infrastructure and capital projects. I think, I think if I read it right, it was up to $400,000. Um, community planning is more focused on, on planning. So the intent here is they're trying to, they're trying to get every, they have the development spectrum and they're trying to help communities get through that. So if you're in the early stages, they're going to direct you to community planning, um, and if you're further along, they're going to direct you to maybe the rural and small town development fund, maybe a mass works grant, um, something like that. So we're still trying to fill out that program. Green communities grant, and that uh, is due April 9th. Um, there's a veterans heritage grant that's also due April. 
Uh, so some community compact grants that are gonna be available, the efficiency and regionalization. Um, complete streets grant, I believe is gonna open up in May. That possibly that's something um, we could apply for uh, a second one to finish the, the sidewalks on the southern part of uh, Chestnut Plain Road and um, whatever else we can fill in from uh, from our priority uh, prioritization plan. Um, there's the MVP action grants, which I think I just saw an email today about um, um, a pre RFR expression of interest. So that's uh, that's something we'll be eligible for. Um, so this is because we've gone through the MVP planning process, the two workshops that um, that we recently had. Although we may not have a final plan because we've had um, the, pub the public meetings, we should be eligible for those action grants. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to decide what 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 we we'll want to apply for there. Community compact best practices grant. Uh, these are small grants that that are meant to help communities adopt best practices um, in terms of services, uh, service delivery and operations. And then there's these two grants, um, IT grants that can help with, with, with IT security. Um, I think we've applied for at least one of these to get an assessment done. Uh, but so there's a lot of grant opportunities out there. Um, some of these, um, our conversations with committees like Green Communities Energy Committee. Some of these are conversations with department heads. Um, complete Streets we'll, might have to uh, revisit the the uh, Complete Streets Committee. Um, but those are all things that that if we want to apply for are going to take some time to develop projects uh, and put in those applications. So, so is there any way? Okay. Um, some of I these, can, such as the the cyber health and the IT health, could could we figure out a way to do this regionally so that the 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 health checks are on behalf of a number of towns so that we have some some heft behind the application? Yeah, and maybe even some help for the like schools if we applied as a as the frontier regional, we'd have five schools and four towns in there right or, or even even joyce if, if you included you know let, let's see if there's a way to include smith academy and hatfield into that conversation or or others so that so that it, it's a it's a it's a scale and scope that will be taken seriously mm. so brian looking at this list you've got like five or six of these do within the next three months. Yeah. If, if we uh, apply for, for all of these. And are, are, you, are you looking to the board to help you decide which ones to apply for, or you want us to say apply for them all? Um, at, at this point, I, at this point, I guess I, well, the board would have to agree to apply to any of these. Um, but at this point, I, I just wanted to, to make the board aware that these opportunities exist, um, in that, I mean, for some of these, it, it, there needs to be a conversation around, or really around project development in, in what, what the town might want to pursue, yeah. um, you know, for the, for the one stop for growth, I think the process is you can you can submit five expressions of interest with five different projects. Um, so that would be a conversation that we'd have to have. Um, shared winter streets and spaces, um, we would have to figure out sort of what, you know, what makes sense, what might be competitive. Um, because the, a lot of the money seems to have gone to uh, communities that have downtowns and outdoor dining and sidewalk dining and things like that. Mm. Um, so well, I think, the, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so I just think it's, I think I'm just trying to start, get this on our minds that, that these opportunities are there and, and we might want to have conversations about, about what projects might make sense. 
whether we have projects that that make sense. Um, if we don't, then we obviously don't want to spin our wheels and, and waste time applying for for opportunities that that might not be competitive. Yeah. Well, it's would, it's would it, go ahead, Joyce. Would it be like because so many of these deadlines are so soon? Um, would it be in our interest to invest in uh, hiring a grant writer and to, you know, paying them to write the grants and not on a percentage basis, you know, if we win it, they get paid. If we don't, they don't get paid. Just make the investment to hire some help. Um, I know that's sort of a double-edged sword because it doesn't really take 100% of the burden off of Brian. Um, I know whenever you, well, I'm always hiring students and you have to train students from ground zero to everything, but it presumably hiring someone who knows something about grant writing, then they are less of a, they would put less of a burden of oversight onto Brian if they're actually already familiar with these programs. Um, so I don't know if such a person exists and would be available for us to hire on a, I don't know, 10 hours a week basis or whatever it might take. Um, and if we would have, you know, any discretionary funds to be able to do that, but it, it's, I just thought I'd put that out there as a possibility um, and something that uh, I think other towns have done something with that. And I don't really know if it's a good match for us because I know having another person there that you have to oversee is, it, it, that's also a burden on your time. I don't have a good idea of, how, of what those two uh, burdens are relative to each other if it would really make any sense and if the, if some of these grants are things we've tried and tried and tried and never get then we might need a fresh pair of eyes on it um i think it would have to be it can't just be like some umass student who wants an internship and that's not gonna work um but uh, an actual uh professional who understands a lot about these grant programs would be maybe worth the investment for us. Okay, well, I guess that's that's a possibility to get help for Brian to to uh, somebody to write grants and, and follow up on these. Uh, that's, I guess, assuming that we want to pursue these. Uh, yeah. And maybe if it doesn't take a whole lot of a, of your time, Brian, if, if we could have some idea of maybe the, the, the dollar amount or the range of dollars that are available for the town for say, for each of these and what is the, uh, I guess, prior, priority in town and, and maybe the uh, likelihood of, of, of success with the grant to know, you know, if we apply for them all and you only get three of them, well, do we know today maybe what three are the highest our highest chances of, of getting funds for? And maybe focus on, on them. Uh, I don't know, something like that possible and come back with the board to say, okay, here's what, what I think uh, is the, the priority and, and how much dollars we could expect. And, and this is our success rate with these kind of programs? Is that possible, Brian, or is that asking too much? Well, well, it, it's hard to judge. It, it's hard to judge likelihood of, of getting it. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, I, I, I guess if I, could, if, I, if I could go back to, to, to Joyce's point for a second. One of the things that I, that I think it is lacking overall is any we don't have a lot of resources and, and time to dedicate towards planning for the future yeah. um and, and i mean and by that i mean um i guess it's easier for me to give examples but i i think for instance the housing committee could i think the housing committee could use a staff person to help them um in the housing trust, um, the housing trust has has a lot of money in it, um, and I think 
you know, someone to do housing planning. We keep talking about we we would like a housing needs assessment. Um, I know the planning board would like help with with you, you know with some of some of their issues in the zoning. Um, you know, I, I look around and I'm going to go off on a tangent for a second, but a lot of the things that have driven growth in this town over the past ten years um, have taken planning. To accomplish, you know, the industrial park is one of them, and we we see significant tax benefits from the industrial park. And Pine Plains Estates is a, is is another one um, where where we see significant tax benefits from. Um, and I think I don't believe there's any more lots there, uh, so I'm just worried that that's maybe that planning that needs to happen um, isn't happening. Jonathan and I talk a lot about economic development planning in exit 24 and things like that. Um, it, we really don't have the time to work with with committees um, to do that planning or, and, to, and to undertake some of the activities that, that might lead to a growth in town. Um, you know, I, I think about the, you know, the open space committee right now where you're going to have an open space and recreation plan and you're going to have all these, I assume you're going to have all these recommendations uh, uh, of things to do. And it's going to be hit or miss whether we have somebody that has the time to, to undertake those activities. Jonathan and I talk a lot about Tritown Beach and, and how Tritown Beach could be better. But between him and I, we don't really have a lot of time to, to push that. Um, so there's, there just seems to be a lot of stuff that that would be great to see happen, um, but with such limited staff, it's difficult. And and we're just we're just prioritizing like we did before. Here's the top three things that that we want to focus on, and everything else just is just kind of catch as catch can. Um, and it, I think that's just sort of the a synopsis of where we are. Um, you know, a lot of the projects that we finished the past couple of years have have taken years of planning, complete streets. That took, I don't know how many years that was, three or four years. And it's just the process you have to go through to get the grant and complete the project. Uh, and I, I think the one stop for growth is going to be a similar thing where the expression of interest we're submitting in April isn't going to see funding until FY, I think they were saying it's the next fiscal year. Um, so I guess I'm putting in a plug for more planning. <laughs> yeah, but, but Brian, let me ask you this, and, and I'm with you hundred percent on the planning, whether it's regionally divided or, or who knows what, but that's just the nature of life anyway. It, it's all about planning, um, yeah. and everything. And, and I, I don't think we should be demoralized by that. Um, Haydenville road has taken planning. The, the town office, the town hall took planning. I mean, it, it just, it just, and if you don't plan, you don't have a very good. You problem. can't take opportunities if you don't have the planning done. Right. So, I mean, I, I, I think the, the need, the need for planning does exist. Um, and, but, but with all you just mentioned, you could argue that it's a full-time job just for Waitley, and there's no way we afford that. And I worry that if we partner with other towns that are larger than us, mm -hmm. does, the, does, the, does the gravitational pull go to the larger towns? And that's something against the larger towns. It's just, it, it's just the, the, what's going to happen with, with, with someone feeling the pressures of, their, of his or her job. So, I mean, down the road, I think we need to do that short term. I think yeah. we need to figure out, or you need to figure out, I would argue to, to Fred's point, which are the most likely to, we can get. I mean, the sidewalks are on the school. They're not going to happen. Let's not worry about the 18th of February. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, I think probably... If I had my crystal ball out, MVP would happen. It's complete streets. You know, depending upon what the project is, 
perhaps. So I, I just I just think it's two different things. It's the planning, but it's also what do we do in the immediate and understanding we're not going to have planning anytime soon. Yeah, I think they're two different. So I, I guess by the next meeting, well, no, I, I, I think, and, and, and I guess I don't think it's a function of this board unless you are actively soliciting our input based upon our ex expertise in certain areas. I think you've just got to decide what you want to spend your time on and come to us with the recommendation as to what and why for the short term. I disagree. I think we our input is actually not is is, is it probably something that is valued. I like to think my input is valued. I didn't say it wasn't choice. I'm just then, in terms of expeditious. I think it could be valuable to to Brian, but his input is also valuable to us. It seems like the shared winter streets and spaces. If we don't, that's the most. Um, oh, I'm going to mute that person. There we go. Um, uh, that one, it seems like if that's really, that's the closest one. That's the one we have to decide to back or not now and can't really wait till the next meeting. And that's, that's the one that, that's the one that he said that I, 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 you know, I'll put it in more stark terms. We're sort of beating our head against the wall. Right. So like the only thing we could, we could plausibly do is resubmit what we put in last year that got rejected. We don't really have the, um, the man hours, if we put it that way, to come up with a newer, better application for that grant in town. And we're unlikely to because they're giving those grants mostly to places that have uh, a downtown with lots of restaurants and sidewalks. Um, it would take us a while to develop something like that. So I'm with you on deprioritizing the shared winter streets and spaces. Um, it's, and the culvert replacement sounded like that. We have something to something that's ready to go in, and that won't be a, a big deal. But we're really thinking about the things that are uh, six weeks out from now, where the expressions of interest have to go in in early April, and then many more following in April. So, hmm. yeah. Uh I, I know. I I think the the, the board should give some direction to, to Brian and which ones he should pursue because if we we each may have our own viewpoint view our own opinions and you know gonna depend on how often and, or, and if we talk to Brian about it which one we think is important and then tomorrow somebody else calls and says well no I think you ought to do this one because you know <laughs> I heard this and this and whatever so it's a priority. I think the, the board should give some, some direction. And, and uh, the second thing is, is uh, Brian, if you looked any further, and I know I mentioned to you this to you about getting help, more help for, for you, you and or Amy to do some of the other activities that, that you do say routinely, to free up some time to devote to some of these grants, to applying for some of these, have you looked at that at all, or or think that's that's a, an option that would that would help? Um, I, I have given some thought to it, and that's probably why I talked for the last five minutes. But, um, a lot of the. A lot of the stuff, I think the greatest help, if, if this were a perfect world and, and money were not an option, the biggest help would be um, if we could have a position that would address a lot of these grant stuff and a lot of this project development and planning stuff and, and working with committee, someone to work with the energy committee to help with the EV charging stations and, and somebody to actually write the grants. Um, it, working with the committees and doing the actual writing take a lot of the time, you, you know, take the, the bulk of the time. Um, and there, there just seems to be so much 
opportunity here for planning and for, for, for good things that can happen. Um, that, that just seems like the area of the highest need at this point. But doing the coordination with the committees and attending the meetings and planning the meetings and, and writing the grants, that, that takes up a lot of time that could be freed up, you know, to help me or to give me more time to, to focus on more core things, um, you know, financial planning, capital planning. Um, I would, you know, I'd still want to do the projects that involve town properties like, you know, the center school and and the that deep property that we never talk about, the DeMaio property, um, in, in those types of things. Uh, there's there's stuff from a personnel standpoint that I would love to get to. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of things operationally that, that I would love to devote more time to. Um, you know, the police reform is one of them. We're going to have to have some, we're going to have to dive deep into that. It, it's having the opportunity to dive deeper into issues. Um, is what would be really helpful. Uh, I still need to be involved in procurement and contracting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, OSHA and workplace safety. That's that's something that that's still out there. We're 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 trying to do the best we can with it. Um, but there, there's definitely things we can improve on. Um, social media, if that's something we want to go to, um, in, in working with FCAS. So. So, Fred, I think that's a long answer, um, but I think having having somebody cover a lot of the the project development and working with committees is is useful because um, it would free up time, my time, to focus on other things. That's a long answer. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I just I, I I don't necessarily agree that. We don't have money to hire somebody to help you. I, I, I think there's there's a need for that, and, and I think there there is we can justify the the need, the expense. Uh, you know, if we get one of these grants, that's enough to pay for that person's position, that sal salary of that position. I mean, all it takes is one or two of these to to make it uh, economically justifiable to to have that person on board. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess my understanding is a little different. If we get these grants, the stuff the grant is paying for might be the sidewalks, or they won't actually pay the salary of the person who wrote the grant. No, right. So that's it's why money. I say it's an investment on our part to invest in this person who may be able to, you know, get the do the planning that's going to make the grant be a good application that gets funded. Right. And then it's not that it pays for that person, it pays for things that we would otherwise not have. Had we not made the investment in um, what I'm, I'm going to start calling our our part time planner, I think Fred's point would 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 be more that assuming we're going to do some of these things, whether we get a grant or not, the amount of dollars that it will cost to do those things would mm -hmm. pay for right. um, a, a position if we got if we had a grant to to yeah. to pay for that that project instead, mm -hmm. and, and I yeah. get that. Um, yeah. and, and I, I want to pull this back a little bit because what we're discussing is, is incredibly important, but let's assume for a minute that it's February, what is it, 9th today, no, 12th today, 11th, whatever it is. Yeah, 11th, 12th, 10th, um, something. You're not going to bring somebody on unless you can find someone with a skill set in these specific areas, which I'm not sure you can because it's not just general grant writing, it's but skill sets and experiences in these areas, you're gonna find someone for four to six weeks at, at a minimum. So I, I think we need to divide these two conversations apart between how do we get these done and then how do we not have this same conversation down the road because we acted judiciously to, to plan appropriately. So, I mean, if we're up to me, I, I wouldn't do the, 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 the um, shared winter streets and spaces because I don't think we're going to get it. I, I don't think that the culvert thing is a big lift from what I can tell. Um, mm -hmm. The 
community planning expression of interest is a let LOI. I, I'm, I'm, I can't imagine that's a big, big lift other than a, a list of, of projects. Um, I guess I would focus on green communities and, um, and, and, and probably complete streets as the two most likely that we're, that we're gonna get. And then maybe MVP is tied into that because MVP can, can solve part of our culvert issue as well. That's... I mean, LOIs are easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's very similar to what I was thinking. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. And, and then maybe we can put on the agenda and, 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 and you know, sooner rather than later, because it's going to be a, a, a topic of discussion with, with finance about, about a, a planning position of some percentage of FTE. And my guess is that you would get other towns to say, yeah, I'll help, I'll, I'll, I'll join forces with you, with you on that. Because if we, if we can hire a full-time person divided by a number of towns, you're absolutely gonna get a more qualified person. Do you think Sunderland would be interested, Jonathan? I actually do. I think Sunderland and Hatfield would actually. I think Sunderland is, well, so bigger than us, and I, I think they have different problems with uh, population and, and housing and mm -hmm. closeness to UMass, I, I guess, than, than we do. Yeah, I, no. But I, I think we have, a, we have an awful lot in common, too, though, so. Right, um, right. But, and I, if we were only going to hire someone half time and they hire half time and we hire the same person, so it's really a full time job, then we can't, we would not begrudge the person for working half of their time on different kinds of problems than they're working on for us. Right. Right. And we might find common, common solutions based upon that person saying, hey, because they have the time to put two and two together where we really don't have the time or the information to put two and two together. Yeah. We all apply for the same grant programs. <laughs> so they just need to do ours better. Right. Just <laughs> just different, just different isolated projects. Yeah, and we'll be nicer to them. So they'll want to do more for us. But I, I really do think we're going to see development pressure, especially around exit 24 with Treehouse Brewing going in in Deerfoot. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a prime opportunity to plan to plan yeah. for that area. Yep. Yeah. And, and Brian and I have talked about this a lot. So, you know, in full transparency, he and I are not going to disagree on this. Um, <laughs> Safe statement, though. You know, it is shame on us if we let this opportunity pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we decided that we identified, what, three grants here that we should place emphasis on? I think it was four, Fred, wasn't it? I think it was four. It was the uh, the OSFG. If you count those as one, uh, no, those really two lines on here. And then green communities, and then you know uh, complete streets and possibly MVP. Yeah. Uh, although we don't know when the MVP deadline is. Okay. Okay. Well, and and the culvert replacement thing. No, oh, the 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 yeah the low hanging fruit. We right. can resubmit if. If I guess if Keith thinks that's the highest priority culvert, we could resubmit for that. I mean, there's some there's some there's some qualifications there as to what's eligible or not, but it, it, it met the criteria in terms of um, ecological value or something like that. Okay, Brian, could could you? Uh annotate that on this list and for our next meeting or something and so we can again focus on, on what our priorities are and everybody would know uh, yeah and i and also i think it would be good to have a conversation about the well jonathan and i will touch base on the the one stop for growth but i think we can spin up to five um expressions of interest 
Okay, and at the same time, uh, you will develop something for not for a, say a planning position or a shared planning position or a regional planning position uh, for what our budget season is that that would be a time to discuss. Yeah, I'll 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 write something up with that, and if it's all right, I'll have a conversation with with the Sunderland TA as to what their needs may be. Do you want me to talk to the board as well, or do you want to just do it at the TA level, Brian? Um, I think it's fine. I think the more conversations we have, the better. Yeah, that's fine. And wasn't there a, a neighboring town? Somebody mentioned it as a person that does that. Was it Williamsburg? I thought or? it was Deerfield. But no, I, it was Williamsburg isn't that Deerfield. No, Deerfield, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I can. I, I, I can. wasn't able to verify any of the information in the email, but I didn't, I haven't taken a lot of time to do that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Brian? Uh, just to, just uh, the Veterans Memorial Park public input meeting that was scheduled tomorrow has been, uh, been postponed. Um, I think we need to develop that plan a little bit more before we seek public input. So. Um, we'll have some more internal discussions. Okay. So the, the, the abutters weren't aware of it, by the way, just as an FYI. Yes, we had, Amy and I were planning on doing a butter outreach and um, we got the material last Saturday. And so on Monday, we, uh, whenever we thought we should probably pull back. Yeah, I, I'm just in the future, I would suggest, I don't know whether it's allowed, but I would suggest just pulling the thing off the site rather than saying postponed because it gives abutters who happen to look at it pause to say, what is this? Just yeah. remove it so that people don't have that curiosity. Okay. Right. Okay. Anything else, Brian? Uh, I think that about covers it. Okay, I have, I have two items here under items not anticipated. Uh, one is the uh, uh, May 10th date is, is the date of the town's first annual meeting. May 10th, uh, what, 1771. May 10th is when they had the first annual meeting uh, that falls on a Monday this year. If we wanted to do anything on that day or move our select board meeting to May 10th or even move our uh, annual meeting from June to, to May 10th to coincide with that. <coughs> just, uh, just a thought whether we want to celebrate that day or not. Uh, I, I know, Brian, you developed a, a schedule to for the budget season to coordinate with with uh, finance people, and uh, it's focusing on the on a, on a June date for the meeting. I, I looked at that in detail the other the other day. I, my reaction is there's a lot of uh, dead time in, in in the month of May, uh, depending on how much uh, what comments we get and if everybody is ready. And I don't know. If some of that is, is for your time to do other things, why you push that meeting till till June, uh, other than maybe we get better weather and we don't deal as much with, with the COVID-19 uh, times in June. But think about whether we want to move it up to May and, and, and don't drag out the budget process so long. Uh, uh, I guess think about it. Uh, and the second thing is the, uh, Brian, you sent me something the other day, or well, you sent all of us the other day about the 250th celebration. Uh, uh, I guess maybe I should ask Joyce to say it, but uh, they're planning on a what, remote parade, I guess, on April 24th, and they're asking for select board participation in that parade. Uh, and I guess Brian, you are you forwarded that to us from the from the what fire chief was asking. Uh, 
I, I guess I, I'm open to, to that date and, and doing something. I don't know exactly what we would do uh, other than it would not, it probably would not be a walking tour because it would be all over town, kind of like the Christmas uh, parade they had with, with all the equipment. So uh, yeah. I don't know how the other two, you, you, you feel about that. I, I guess I'm open. I, I got some ideas how we could do that. I, I need to investigate it further before, I, I guess, to see whether it's possible before I make it public, I guess, and before we, before we agree to it. Fred, I'm not sure we're gonna have enough information on, on state money by May 10th to, to push our, in the, in the world of, of of COVID? Well, it would probably, be, well, the June probably will be outdoor meeting like we did last year. So May would be outdoor as well, I would, I would assume. And, and I, I don't know if we agreed to the April 26th date is our, our meeting in April for for that uh, incorporation date, I'm personally I'm I'm fine with moving our date by one day, to so we can do some, uh, something a little special at that meeting. But we we will have business to accomplish at that meeting, right? So right, right. so so it would be something. It, it's you're you're asking for something that's pretty small and can but still significant. So I think right. that's a great idea. And then Pete maybe. Uh, you know, with the um, the parade being two days earlier, um, as far as participation in the parade, um, I would really be interested in hearing ideas about how to do that. Well, I be you want to do something like they do for the Santa parade, um, so it could be as little as just we each are in our cars and we're each running down the line and waving to people and that sort of thing, um, or it could be. You know, if we if we could pull off making a float, but uh, but yeah, within that float, you have to be you know socially distanced and masked right. and so on. So I, I don't I don't really have a clear idea of what that would look like either. So I'm I but I'm I'm very interested in um, in maybe thinking about this a little bit more and seeing what we can do given the other constraints we all have on our time and right. energy and resources. Right, I like I say I have some options that I want to look at. I'm just curious, do we even have a sign or a banner that says Whaley Select Board or Selectman on it? If we were to hang it on a on a vehicle, say, or a flag. We have a flag for the town of Whaley, though, don't we? Right, but do we don't have anything with Select Board on it or Selectman prior year? That I've seen, no. No, okay. Well, I. I have ideas of how we could even even do that uh, very economically. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything else to discuss at this meeting? Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for February 24th. I move to adjourn. Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote to adjourn, to adjourn, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Okay, thanks you guys, have a great night. Hey, Aye, good, good night. night, everybody. Good night, Amy. Good night.